Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Talk About Sleep, <clears throat> the channel where we talk about sleep based on the book, talk about sleep, let's talk about sleep. I had to bring this back, right? It's been a few videos. I haven't uh, haven't shown it. Uh, so as we inch closer to 1,000 subscribers, when we get to 1,000, a lucky uh, viewer will get a signed copy of that book at random. So you got to be subscribed to, uh, to, to get it. So please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video if you liked it. Please share it with your friends and family. And as I always say, these videos are for educational purposes only. Okay. A few years back, I made a video on fatal familial insomnia. But recently, somebody had asked a, a question about it and wanted me to comment on it. So I thought I'd make like an updated version of that. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, what is it? Well... I say this with full compassion to the people who, who the families who have been affected by it, but it's a, a very unique and interesting condition, just scientifically. It is extremely, extremely rare. Only about 25 cases have been reported of, of this. And uh, where it comes from, it's a genetic abnormality, okay? So there's a lot of, um, it's familial in its in its presentation, okay? So there's there's groups of families here and there that have have suffered with this. In nature, there's something called the prion protein, P-R-I-O-N. And we're not even sure really what the function of it is, but we know when it when it kind of becomes awry, when it when when the person inherits a faulty genetic code from one of the parents, this prion protein is not able to be made in a normal way. And what happens is it's a protein, the abnormal form gets folded in a different way. Okay, so normally in nature you have a gene you make a protein, that's how that's how our, our DNA structure is it makes makes our cells. We have genetic code becomes makes proteins and then the proteins make the various things that we have in our body. In this case though, the faulty genetic code creates this abnormal protein and the protein is kind of misfolded, we call it. Because it's misfolded, it actually causes other um, it, it kind of like it fills, it, it builds on itself. So it's like a domino effect. So one of these proteins being abnormally folded causes the rest of them to do so. And over time, what happens is this, this, this toxic stuff starts building up in the cells and they start to die. This protein especially is seen in the central nervous systems, which is why this condition occurs. The other thing that you may have heard about that has a similar kind of presentation or a similar way of, of, uh, of, of presenting is mad cow disease, okay? But that was not from inherited. That's because they ate infected or, or um, affected meat that had this prion protein there. So people ingested it. That prion protein caused the other proteins in their, in their central nervous system to become abnormal, and then the domino effect continued. Same idea, okay? But this time, it's genetic fatal familial insomnia okay so what happens is when these when these things start to build up over time okay this years to to decades um the the age of onset is between 18 to 60 years has been reported okay the average age is about 50 years old or so what happens is once the person starts having symptoms it usually it's about a year and a half so about 18, 18 months or so from the time that they get diagnosed or the time that they have symptoms to the time that they die, okay? And what happens is it starts off with severe insomnia, okay? Hence the name fatal familial insomnia. These patients can't sleep. They have really severe trouble, okay? That then progresses to delirium, okay? So they start, so actually it first progresses to hallucination. So they start seeing things which can happen if somebody is chronically sleep deprived. That then progresses then to dementia and delirium, where you know their their brain has basically lost touch with reality, and then eventually they, they don't sleep at all. So the sleep has basically been eliminated from their brain's ability to do. And then around this time is when they start to to die. Um, <clears throat> very very sad. There's unfortunately nothing that can be done about this. Okay, any kind of prion disease, whether it be mad cow disease, whether it be this whether it be this other prion disease called uh, Yakov Kreutzfeld um, disease, there's not really anything that can be done other than supportive care. So, you know, I, I've never seen a patient like this. I mean, there's only been, you know, 25 in the world, um, but but it is out there, okay? And 
you know, people hear about this condition, they think, oh, you know, I have this really, really bad case of insomnia. Does that mean I have fatal familial insomnia? It's extraordinarily, extraordinarily unlikely. Um, I don't even know if any cases have been reported in the U.S., actually. Uh, most have been in Europe and other places. So um, the likelihood that somebody has fatal familial insomnia is, is unbelievably low. But it is out there and it does exist, so it's important to kind of know about it and have an understanding of what it is. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's the, the condition itself. It's, um, it's one of these conditions that because it's so rare, we don't know a lot about it other than what I just, what I just mentioned to you. Uh, with any kind of prion disease, the the goal would be to somehow to stop it right at its right at its at its, its beginning, and that way, progress the progression to neurodegeneration is stopped. That's the uh, that's the ultimate goal. But all these neurodegenerative illnesses, they are uh, you know whether it be something like Parkinson's, which we know a lot about, or FF uh, FFI, they're very harrowing to both the patient and family member. So. Maybe in time we'll have a better understanding of it, but that's that is what FFI is. Very bad, very um, very rare, thankfully, but but it is quite a uh, quite hellish. So that's the video for today. Thank you for the person who who suggested I make a video on this. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I read them all, and uh, what I do every month is I make a video, one to two videos or even three, um, answering those questions. So thank you for interacting. For those who have. And thank you for watching. Until next time, sleep well.